Welcome to the second podcast for 2023 with Crime Stoppers Victoria and partner Bankvik. Today, we will be continuing our focus on financial violence. We are joined by Chelsea Tobin, CEO of Safe Steps. With a background in psychology, commerce, strategy and research, Chelsea brings extensive knowledge and experience in making communities stronger through the delivery of services that build supportive, resilient and more inclusive practices within domestic violence. Chelsea, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. What is Safe Steps? Safe Steps is the crisis entry point for the wider family violence service system in Victoria. Our phones are open 24 hours a day, every single day of the year, and we provide specialist response to members of the public around family violence. Important to say, if you're in immediate danger, please call triple zero. But last year, Safe Steps answered and made nearly 180,000 calls from victims. We answer web chats. It's a safe way to connect with us. And we provide crisis accommodation to victims and all their children. Thanks, Chelsea. What services or interventions do you Safe Steps assist with? If you call us, the first thing we'll do is check in on how safe you are right now to have the conversation. Then we can give you information and connect you to services that can help you, whether that's legal or financial counselling. We'll also help you understand your options. We'll do safety planning with you and that means, you know, how to leave or how to be safer in the home. We can get you somewhere safe to stay. We can provide funding to support you. We also have specialised services like disability supports. We provide court advocacy see through the court system if you need and services like pet safety you know it's common for perpetrators or abusers to threaten to kill the family dog or actually do it and one of the things we know is that people won't leave if they can't take their pets with them so safe steps provides a service to ensure that you can take your pet with you or they'll be really cared for you while you're getting support access to the service can come directly from a victim um, or a member of their public their representative family friends or agencies that are working with them referrals are received by phoning the service which is 1800 015 188 or by contacting safe steps by the safe steps web chat or email it's really 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 great to hear how much safe steps is involved in giving services to people who need it and i really love the pet safety i think that's really important often for victims that's their one source of comfort and support yeah. so it's really important that we take that holistic approach yeah that's really great to hear who are the types of people that safe steps supports Safe Steps will provide a range of services to anybody who contacts the service. So anybody that is scared or being abused at home or anybody who's worried about somebody hurting their family or friends. I think important here, it's really easy to believe that domestic violence happens to other people in other suburbs or other towns, not to people like you and me. And we just know from the research that that is just not true. Being wealthy or educated doesn't protect you. Being male or strong or independent or smart or popular, none of those things mean it can't happen to you. We'll provide services to all victim survivors and recognise that most of our work is dedicated to the needs of women and children, which reflects the highly gendered nature of family violence. So what are some of the situations that people encounter? My favourite author on this topic, Jess Hill, she calls sort of coercive control a strategic campaign of abuse held together by fear. And that's what I see on the phones every day here at Safe Steps. It kind of destroys you from the inside like a virus. The type of things, if you go out to our call centre right now, that you will hear are, for example, having the debt in her name but not the associated asset. So she might have the cost of the car insurance but not the car begging for petrol money, no credit card or access to money, dictating shopping lists and micro-reviewing the receipts, withholding money for basic things like the dentist, talking down her family or who she was sending money to overseas and eventually stopping the payments, you know, isolating her from her family and then having the dollars diverted to him eventually, being excluded from financial decisions or withholding financial information. You know, often it'll start quite small and there'll be small incremental steps. What I do hear is forcing the person to work and not giving them access to their wages or stopping them from school so that they can go to work, pressuring them to sign documents or forging and giving debt or diverting payments into their name. 
you know, we see women really scared to talk about money because he will blow up in inverted commas. Lots of examples of you can't go back to work, nobody will ever hire you. So that really degrading, destabilising, talking down, really common is will keep you away from friends and families, you know, classic, they don't understand our relationship, your mum or your sister, they don't really like you anyway. In fact, your mum feels really sorry for me. It can be really rigid rules. And it can be really specific and really vague. So, you know, it can be specific as in you can't wear that lipstick. But it can be really vague as don't you make me angry. It's really hard to know how to action that. Queensland Police recently, for example, they've collected data which is about 80% of their over 100,000 incidents of family violence had features of coercive control in them and I'm sure Lauren would have spoken to you about this as police's core business. A recent study in Victoria really makes it really clear for us about our challenge. The fear of destitution is the number one reason women are afraid to leave their abuser. The only other thing I'd say about financial coercive control and coercive control in general is financial abuse seldomly happens in isolation it'll be part of a bigger coercive control plan which really destroys you sort of socially emotionally spiritually financially etc so it's a web or a pattern from the abuser that's really sad to hear especially because just from hearing all that stuff i can see how it can affect a lot of people emotionally which then will be like a spiral into really bad emotional and mental state are there any early warning signs of financial violence as it relates to coercive control of finances yeah there's sure are. I think if an abuser or a person is critical of how you're spending your dollars, you know, the classic, you're so wasteful, you don't even understand finances, so I'll do this for us. Again, it'll happen in incremental steps. So back to the insurance example, when the insurance is due, the abuser puts it in your name, but not the car. I think another early warning sign is if you're embarrassed to tell your friends or family, it's probably a sign that there's something wrong. It can be really hard to recognise financial abuse in a relationship. People often know that there's something wrong but they don't have a name for it however something might tip you over the edge so receiving another bill you weren't expecting discovering your partner's hidden assets or reading an article or a podcast and just know we can help you so that's the time to pick up safe steps and we can work you through it sometimes the challenges for the victims are around three things so debt it's really hard to focus on the future when you're struggling with past debts that you didn't know about confidence due to the coercive control pattern you need to get your confidence back to manage financially and maybe upskill and then third the sort of ongoing legal issues and costs associated with separation and we can help you with all of those it's really great to see safe steps you know provide those services for people who really need it if i was going through all that i wouldn't know how to get out so knowing that safe steps is there that's yeah that's really great i think that the hardest thing is just taking that first step and so when you call us there'll be a friendly voice on the other end and they can just talk you through at your pace your options and all the supports that we can give and start you on that path. Again, it's just really good to hear. And what are any social enablers of family violence? Look, there's always really important exceptions to this rule, but we know that family violence is highly gendered and male abusers really feel like they should be in control. You know, men should be brave to be a proper man. You should be in control. And all these attitudes exist in all demographics. So the challenge we have is to make sure that men feel confident to be equals in relationships. So it seems that it's most common in men that do it? Look, we know that women are three to four times more likely to experience domestic and family violence than men and we know that that number is really underestimated. We also know that the official statistics are not capturing enough of the LGBTIQA plus community and it certainly happens there and we all need to move as a sector to make sure that all victim survivors are accommodated and supported. Is there a safe way out of coercive financial control and family violence? There certainly is. You know, everybody can learn to be financially independent. But you've got to watch out for the warning signs. If somebody says that you can't or you shouldn't, call us and help is available. If a person is making you carry a debt, it's a really effective way of controlling you. It can happen to anyone, as we said before, being wealthy is not a protection. You know, I hear time and time again, you know, things like you won't be able to afford to send those kids to that school. I'll take the house. You'll lose everything. But leaving puts people at risk. It's actually the time that most women are killed. And we're really aware of this and we'll work really closely with the experts to help you leave safe. Safely. 
and that's why we exist. In terms of specific supports, if you want to leave but don't have any access to money, we can help you. So for example, you can call us and we can connect you with all the eligible Centrelink payments. That might be the crisis payment, job seeker, the parenting payment, etc. We can help you with the escaping family violence payment. We can connect you to services that offer free financial counselling and we can help you with costs if you need to relocate to another state or another area, so removalist costs or flights, etc. It's really good that Safe Steps does that. The Royal Commission was really clear around that. I mean, to the point before around the number one reason women don't leave is the fear of destitution. So the Royal Commission in 2014 was really, really clear around needing to have supports around that. And so the service system is really set up. So if you call us, we'll just hold your hand and step you through all the supports available. That's really great. So how can people access Safe Steps? So there's three ways to access us. So the toll-free number, which is 24 hours a day, 365 days, a year and that's 1-800-015-188 that's 1-800-015-188 through web chat through our website or email at safesteps at safesteps.org.au. All that information is on our website. And is there anything else that you would like to share with the public about Safe Steps or financial coercive control? We've spoken a lot about victims today, but it's really important to also talk about the supports available for men committing abuse. The Royal Commission and the National Plan to End Violence Against Women and Children really focus on holding the perpetrator to account. We know that many men don't want to commit this abuse and they want to stop but they don't know how and there are services available and I would just encourage any of your listeners that are concerned about their behaviour they can call the men's referral service on 1300 766 491 and they're there to help. Worth mentioning is the National Community Attitudes Towards Violence Against Women, the NCAS survey has just come out and it shows some alarming things so it says that 95% of people think that family and domestic violence is a serious problem but almost 50% of people don't believe it happens in their community and we just know that is not true so just some alarming community attitudes and a little bit of habituation to family violence I think just in terms of your listeners how they might help if they think somebody is experiencing family violence or concern the number one thing I'd say is don't judge things that are helpful is you might worry that you're interfering if you get involved but your support can make a difference you can tell the person that you're worried about them and explain why you can listen to her and take the abuse really seriously you can help her understand that the abuse isn't her fault help her protect herself offer really practical help like minding the children cooking a meal offering a safe place to stay maintain regular contact find out about services like us and legal options to help her but it's just not helpful to judge her for staying because there's many reasons really good reasons why women stay yeah and I guess it's just about making sure that as a friend to that person that you show that you're there for them so thank you for joining us and shedding a lot more light on coercive control and financial coercive control I think it's really important to make people a little bit more aware of it because I feel like the natural thought of family violence is physical I never really thought about financial control and how much that can affect a person's being and mental state as well. So it's great to have you here and teach everyone about financial and coercive control. Thank you. To learn more about Safe Steps, visit their website, safesteps.org.au. For you or anyone you know is experiencing domestic violence or coercive control, please contact Safe Steps on 1800 015 188. If you are in immediate danger, Call triple zero for police and ambulance help. 1800 Respect is a 24-hour national sexual assault, family and domestic violence counselling line for any Australian who has experienced or is at risk of family and domestic violence and or sexual assault. Individuals can also access local support services and search the internet using DAISY, a free app developed by 1800 Respect that protects user privacy. You can also get free confidential advice from a financial counsellor by calling the National Debt Helpline on 1800 007 007 between 9.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. You can also find a financial counsellor in your area on the National Debt Helpline website. Thank you for listening. For more podcasts in collaboration with Bank Vic, visit crimestoppersvic.com.au.
From landing your first job, applying for a home loan or funding that retirement renovation, there are moments in life when super plays its part. Sometimes they're obvious, sometimes not. But when your super moment arrives, it makes sense to be with a long-term top performer like Australian Super. It's Australian, it's super, and it's yours. Balanced option compared to super ratings, SR50, 60 to 76 index to December 31, 2023. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future returns. Read the PDS and TMD at australiansuper.com.